Hello, guys. Uh, welcome back to MedZone African Motives, uh, still on our engineering science and to working on work power and efficiency. Uh, having our exam question that we are going to consider together. Uh, 4.1, we were given the first part of the question to define uh, energy. All right, uh, energy uh, different from power because energy is now the ability to do work, whereas power is the rate of doing, the rate at which work is done. But at, uh, the, the energy is the ability. So this one is the ability. Thus, the ability uh, to do work. All right. Thus, the ability to do, to do work. That is our energy. Okay. Uh, then 4.2, we are given that uh, this is one of the most, I'm just going to have a sketch and you understand me. I'm not going to draw these guys, but I'm just going to help you to understand. We are given that a crane, in this case, there's a crane there that weighs a load off. Okay. Okay, let, 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 let's be together there. A crane, it what? It was a load. It, in all things, there is supposed to be a load to be hoisted. It's whether the load is taken in form of a bucket carrying this, or they give you direct that it's a load. They're supposed to be the load. And there we are given its, its force, right? So there in terms of the load, we are given the force of the load in this case, which is what? 5,000 Newton. All right. Then we are given that tech knot is supposed to be hoisted to the top of a building 30 meters high, which is the displacement, the distance taken as what? As 30 meters. And the chain, now we are talking about another part, the chain, the, 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 the load is it's done. You know, on the, on the chain, it can be a rope or they can use a chain, a chain or a rope. So there they are saying the chain used to hoist the load which is the one that we talked about there. Yes, a weight of. This is the weight of the chain, the weight per meter. When, when it is given like this, is it's the Newton per meter. So is the weight of the chain per meter. They did not give us the exact weight. That is not the exact weight. That is the weight of the chain per meter. They are supposed to, to, to write it that way. Here they are saying this, this is the weight of the chain per meter. So you are supposed to, read uh, to understand this part here right which is different from this one there we are given uh for the chain we are given uh the weight per meter there which is 20 uh newton per meter so what is going to be the weight of the chain if it is uh 20 newton and we are given that the weight that is used to, to hoist this in a distance or, or the, the, the the building which is 30 meters high what is going to be the exact weight of the chain, which is the force of the chain. So the force of the chain in this case is going to be the weight of the chain per meter. So that is 20 Newton per meter, All right? Remember this is Newton per meter times the number of meters that were being hoisted, which is 30 meters, meter and meter cancels. All right, so there we multiply. So 20 times 30 uh, is going to give us what? 600 Newton. So this is the total weight of the chain. That was the, the weight of the chain per, 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 take note, per each meter, per each one, per each one meter is 20 Newton. What about 30 meters? How many Newtons do we have that will correspond to, to 30 meters? So it's like a proportion, right? That is the idea then. Uh, so, the, the, that was the understanding that we are given on this information, but that is not the question. The question here needs us, take note, calculate the total work done in hoisting the load and the chain, the total work done. We need the total work done. So remember that the total work done, if I have got a diagram, it's easier for me to calculate the total work, work done. All right, this is 4.21. So, uh, let, let's, it was, this is us answering the question, guys. We can do whatever that we want. We can even do a sketch because it is us who is answering. You answer the way that you understand. You understand this on a sketch. Yes, they never ask you to draw this, but you understand it more when there's a sketch. So you simply sketch it, all right? Uh, I know that at this point, this is our force, all right, uh, which is measured in Newtons. So at this point, the first point, that's from zero. Let's say this is A at this point A. That's where I have, the first thing is the load. So this is the part of the load. 
So the Lord, it has got a weight of 5,000 newton. That is the weight of the Lord. So it's at what? 5,000 newton, right? Let me just reuse this one. 5,000 newton. I, I talked about this. Always this represents what? The Lord. This one is for, for the Lord at point A. That's where we are talking about the Lord. Then to the point B, where we are now talking about the total of everything, which is you have to add because this point, let's say this is where we have our, our, our B. All right. We are going to add the one of the chain because the chain, it is this one. This is the 600 Newton that we see. That is where the 600 Newton is. So to find this one at B, we have to add. That's where I told you guys the force at B is equal to the force at A plus the force of the chain or the force of the rope. So that's the force that you have at A, 5,000, which is the force of the Lord. The force of A is the Lord plus the force of the chain, which is 600. So if we add this, we are going to obtain 5,600. So that's the point at B is 5,600, this one. So there... We've got 5,600 Newton at B. All right. So that's, it. That, that, that's the idea of the question the at B. We've got 5,600. Uh, so from your diagram, you are going to join in this case. You know that you're going to join uh, the one that corresponds at what? At the total distance. And our total distance is 30. This is just a sketch. So this is where you have your 30. Then you join up to this point where it meets with the Lord when it is at 30 meters from the word, from the given point. All right. So this being our distance in what? In meters. We know that the work done, which is the one that we are asked to calculate, the total work done is simply the area under the graph. Or which you could have just calculated direct if you know your formulas to say, okay, yeah, I've got 500 affected. So I know that this 500 is affected for 30. This 600 is the one that I'm going to use versus the 500 and the half because it's going to be half of a, of a triangle. It is someone, you have to visualize what happens, what, what, what is on the diagram. So instead of visualizing, just draw it. This is your Lord. This is the part of the Lord. This is the part of the chain. So I simply, to calculate work done, I need the work done of the chain plus the work done of what? The work done of the Lord. So if it is like that, I can use area of a rectangle plus area of a triangle, or I can just use uh, the total part. All right, so this one, uh, let me just leave it, or maybe you might need it, no problem. It's not a problem, I'll, I'll write it down. So meaning to say our total work done from the total area of this shape, which is a trapezium, is going to be the area, which is half sum of parallel size times the perpendicular, that is the area of the trapezium. So you consider these sides, that are parallel. The wall of this side in this case is parallel to the, this side. So this is half of 5,600, which is the, the wall of this line. That's 5,600. So we've got 5,600 plus this side parallel, which is at the point A, which is 5,000. So that's 5,000 there. All right. Times the perpendicular height, which is this distance, uh, from 0 up to 30. So you multiply by 30. So that was supposed to be the, uh, the, the, the work done, the total work done. Total work done is simply area under the graph. So you simply have to calculate the area under the graph. You obtain 159,000 joules, which is 159 uh, kilojoules. Okay? That's the idea there. Or, like I said, considering uh, the work done by the Lord plus the work done by the chain, it means our total uh, work done, uh, in this case, our work done total was going to be the work done by the Lord plus the work done by the what? By the chain. All right? Which is the work done by the Lord is the area of this rectangle, length times width. So you're going to multiply 5,000 times 30. That is length times width. All right? Well, let me just write the formula down, no problem. Then, uh, so that's 5,000 times 30, like this, 5,000 times 30, plus that work done, which is taken by the chain, from the chain, there's a work done, which is half of the base, because this is a right angle triangle, this is at 90 degrees here, so it's half of this base, which is 30 in this case, so that's half of 30 
times the perpendicular height, which is the difference between these two points, 5,600 and 5,000. So the difference, if we subtract, is the 600 that we see here, which is the weight of the chain, which is the force of the chain, because you are considering what the work done on the chain. So that's the idea there. So if you combine this, you're going to obtain 159,000 joules. All right, that is uh, 159 kilojoules, just like the previous case that we had. So that is how our question was supposed to be answered. Uh, let's see the other part of the question, 4.22, calculate the total power. Calculate the total power required in wasting the load and the chain, which is the one that we calculated is total work done. So if we've got the total work done and we are given that it must take five minutes to waste the total, the total load. So we are still using the total work done. And we've got the time, five minutes. How can we calculate power, guys? Uh, this is straightforward, isn't it? Uh, because we understand that uh, when given power, so that's 4.22, uh, when given time, We've got time, five minutes in this case, and we've got uh, the total work done here. And we understand that the total power is simply work done over the time taken. But this is supposed to be in seconds. Your time is supposed to be in seconds. So that's the total work done that we calculated before, 159,000 over the total time in seconds. So you have to convert minutes to seconds. Remember, in a minute. In one minute, we've got what? 60 seconds. So if in one minute, we've got 60 seconds, what about in five minutes? We have to multiply by, by 60. One is 60. What about five? Five is what? Five times that, all right? So this is the time in seconds, all right? We know that this is work done in joules. This is the time in seconds. So we've got joules per second, which gives us the watt. Remember, one watt is equal to one joule per second. So we are going to obtain our power uh, in this case, which is from this calculation, we're going to obtain 530. Like I said, it is going to be in joules per second, but joules per second simply means what? The watts. So power is 530 watts in this case, all right? Gonna just write it that way. So that is how we could have uh, calculated the total power from the total work done. We can use work done over time taken. It depends with what you're given. Sometimes they give you the velocity, when given velocity, it means you need the total force, not the total work done. You need the total force because it's force times what? Force times velocity. Power can be given from total force times the velocity. That is when given the velocity. But in this case, we have got time and work done. We, we have to use work done and what? And time. So you use the information that you're given. All right, 4.3. Uh, in this case, we move on to 4.3. We are given that a 40 kilogram object is placed on an inclined plane forming an angle of 20 degrees. So there is an inclined plane that we are given. All right. So on this inclined plane, which is making an angle of 20 degrees with the horizontal, there is an object that is being placed here. All right. As we know, if the object is placed, we are going to have the force that is going to tend to go down, which is our parallel force Fs, and the force that is going to tend to take this object up, which is uh, the total force Ft. And according to the gravitational uh, acceleration, we are going to have the weight of the object, the perpendicular force, and the parallel component, which is the one. So here, We've got our FC, we've got our parallel component, which is the same as this FC on that side. And this is our weight. This part here represents the weight, which is equal to mg. Remember, F, mg for weight. And this, if this is 20, this is also 20 degrees inside. So that is the, the condition. So given a mass or a mass of 40 kilograms that you're given there, and this information, the question was to calculate the required force to pull the object up, up, up. It is going where? Up the incline. But the advantage of this question is that we do not have any friction. There's no friction there. So if there's no friction, what does it mean? It means the force that is going up, which is 
FT in this case is equal to the one opposing on the other hand, which is the parallel component because there's no friction, right? If there was a friction on this side, it means we're going to combine these two, but there's nothing there, right? The, the friction is not considered. So if it is like that, what does it mean? It means F up is equal to the parallel. This is the parallel component Fs. And we understand that the parallel component is given by the weight sine of theta. That is the parallel. The perpendicular is W cos theta. Remember that this is W sine theta. So where W is what? Mg mass times gravitational acceleration times the sine of theta. So this is simply a substitution that is happening in this case where we have got to substitute the mass of 40 kilograms times the gravitational acceleration of 9,8 times the sine of theta, which is the sine of 20 degrees. So that is what the question was all about. They just wanted to confuse you, this and that. They want to test you. That's how they are good at. So you, you are not supposed to be tempted. You are supposed to, be, to stand firm and know exactly how to answer the question. All right? So that's it. Uh, your F up there was simply the parallel component since we do not have the friction. So that was going to give you something. If you calculate properly on your calculator, that's 134. Uh, comma 0718. Uh, you're going to round off to three decimal places. So some of us, we need to know this, how to do this on our calculator. So let me quickly show you the calculator here. All right. So on your calculator, let us just save this. So that's 40 here times 9,8 times the sine of 20 degrees. So it's going to give you an endless decimal, 134, comma, this and that. So to three decimal place, it's shift. You go to the setup like that, fix that six, this one. This six is the fix. So you fix this to three decimal place, you press three. So it gives the answer direct to three decimal places. That is 134.072. So this is going to be uh 134.072 in newton so that is how we can have this and if you want to retain back your calculator to the normal mode because if i divide anything if even it is exact it gives me an answer to three decimal place so because i have fixed it to three decimal place so how do i now get, change this to the normal mode it's shift you go to the setup then press eight like that, it is back to the normal mode. Uh, then you press two or one, just press two, then it goes back to the normal mode. Now our calculator is back to the normal mode of operation. That's it, all right? So that's how you can play around with your calculator, guys, to know it. Uh, just try to play around as much as you can so that you understand how to use your calculator effectively in exam. That's it, guys, from Amazon African Motives. Till we meet again.